hello to our audience members joining us for the 23rd YSBC web lecture session. Uh, the topic of today's conversation is uh, from Beijing to the United Nations, China's youth engagement in social business. We have with us our speaker today, Mr. Alex Wong, Secretary General, Youth Think Center and Executive Director of Global Committee on Social Business for Sustainable Development Goals. Our moderator today is Mr. Dominic V. Douster, Managing Director, UNOS and U, the YY Foundation. Mr. Alex Wong's Youth Think Center is one of the leading Chinese youth think tanks focusing on global challenges and opportunities with the vision to build an ecosystem to support young leaders to learn, advocate, and take actions on various topics such as the sustainable development goals, climate change, and social business. Youth Think Center has won a Youth for Asia Award by the Asian Development Bank in 2015, the UN People's Voices Award for Best Social Media Campaign by UN SDG Action Campaign, and the Hyphen Award by the People's Daily. Our moderator today, Mr. Dominic, is a social entrepreneur for Wiesbaden in Germany and serves as the managing director of the UNUS and U, the YY Foundation. He is Professor Mohamed Yunus's United Nations Sustainable Development Goals Sherpa. Dominic also advocates for a social business movement globally, particularly in the areas of Europe, Asia, and East African countries. Now, with the introductions done, we can move on to the main segment of our event today with opening words from Professor Mohamed Yunus. Uh, Professor Yunus. Thank you, Zina, and welcome to everybody in this lecture series. We enjoy this lecture series, seeing people very close to us and the wonderful things they do. Today, we are lucky to have two very important persons and very close to me. One is Alex Wang, who will be the speaker. Uh, he has, a, he has a, as the topic suggests, he traversed the whole globe. He is a big organizer of the youth movement in China to uh, you think uh, center. This is a youth platform. He brought so many youth, young people to Bangladesh to visit us every year uh, because of uh, pandemic today, uh, he cannot do that, but he continues to do that. Apart from his uh, leadership in the youth movement, he's also somebody uh, opened up a completely new dimension for social business. He opened the door for uh, uh, for the United Nations for us. And he organized uh, every, every uh, UN General Assembly meeting. This is month of September. He would be otherwise extremely busy uh, with, the, with the United Nations United, uh, General Assembly meeting, organizing social business forums there. And we would be attending that, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we don't do it physically, but we'll be doing it virtually. So he traverses from uh, China to all the way to the United Nations. He got connected with the many nations, uh, in, invited to those nations to get participated, to participate in the social business uh, discussions within the United Nations as building itself uh, during the UN General Assembly. So he has opened this uh, international dimension, United Nations dimension for us. It will be interesting to hear his experience to the both sides, China, China and United Nations. And Dominic also is very important for me because uh, he's, a sort, he's almost a, a constant companion for my international uh, travels. So we travel together many, many places and you even given him a good title. He's my Sherpa. Uh, well, and he, he, we work together uh, uh, in the United Nations, particularly for SDG, uh, as a part of the SDG advocates. Uh, he organizes all these ad, ad, SDG advocate uh, <coughs> programs within the United Nations and outside the United Nations. So today we have both uh, with the United Nations orientations, plus uh, uh, Dom has, uh, Dominic has uh, another responsibility. He is the head of uh, YY Foundation uh, based in Wiesbaden, Germany. So the, both of them has accumulated lots and lots of experience. Today they will share with us and now I invite uh, Dom to take it over and uh, start the discussions. Thank you, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, dear Professor Yunus, for your kind of welcoming words. And uh, thank you for having me in today's YSBC session as moderator. Uh, it's a great honor and I'm really delighted for this opportunity. And hello everyone and greetings from Germany. 
It's a pleasure to welcome you to this 23rd lecture. I hope you will enjoy the session and take away some uh, inspiration for your work. Back in 2008, I heard uh, Professor Yunus speaking at an university in Berlin, in Germany, which turned out to be a life-changing moment for me. In 2009, I became associated with the Grammy Creative Lab, just at the time when it was founded. So this is when my journey in social business began. And three years later, I was invited to join the Yunus and You, the YY Foundation, and I'm very happy that to today, I'm part of this exciting journey of social business development. And early in this journey, I came to know a young man from China and I was impressed uh, by him being a very active and committed young leader in the field. Alex Wang, he is the first Chinese to be nominated as board of director in the United Nations major group on children and youth. And now he serves as, as board of director in the Beijing Sustainable Education Association, which is the official secretariat of UNESCO China Education and Sustainable Development. Alex was the initiator of the Chinese youth, uh, youth Development Delegation to the United Nations Rio Plus 20, and he led the Chinese youth participation on global development agenda and actively participated in the United Nations General Assembly and at COP. So you see this huge involvement of Alex uh, at the United Nations level. And as we learned, he serves as Secretary General of uh, Youth Think Center, and he's the director of the Global Committee on Social Business for Sustainable Development Goals. He's a trusted friend and colleague, and I'm proud to say that we're working together so well since many years in social business and youth engagement, for example, at the United Nations. So welcome, Alex, to this session today, and thank you for being with us. And let's start right away, as we all wish to learn more about your work. So how did you come to know about Professor Yunus and the concept of social business? Let me start with this. Yes, sure. Thanks very much, uh, thanks very much Tom. And thanks uh, very much, uh, Yunus Center and uh, Professor Yunus to have uh, created this uh, series of webinar that we can connect all their friends working on social business and older uh, uh, people, older young people for interest in, in the topic. For me, that uh, the first time I hear about Professor Yunus and uh, social business is that uh, it's, it's the first year when I joined my university. It was uh, 2006 when Professor Yunus uh, got Nobel Peace Prize. And it's such a big news in China because um, every, all, in order, um, I mean, back to 2006, maybe we don't have social media, but in all the major medias, mm -hmm. there's a top news is that uh, Bank for the Poor won the Nobel Peace Prize. It proves that uh, poor people also has a credit. And then we all know that Professor Yunus said that credits are uh, the basic human rights. I think that that moment that many Chinese young people are so touched by Professor Yunus' work and uh, his dedication on uh, helping the poor. So I think that was the first time I hear about uh, Professor Yunus' work. And later that, um, I, actually two years later, because uh, Professor Yunus was invited to visit China after he got Nobel Peace Prize. So we, we, we watched the news. And two years later, actually, I have opportunity to, there's a big conference in Beijing. Professor Yunus was the keynote. I was trying because I, I read his story and um, he was uh, such a great speaker there. I was trying to take a picture with him and said, may, maybe that Professor Yunus forgot. But that was, uh, before. he's so nice to everyone. He's so nice to everyone and, uh, and uh, talking to everyone and uh, sharing his story. He ever said that uh, he just did uh, such a little thing and then everyone can, can make a big difference if they really want to do. Um, so that was uh, 2008. And later I read the book is that, I mean, before, before it, I read the book about Bank for the Poor, but also, and then Professor Yunus uh, have a book called Building the Social Business. I think it is a, such an interesting topic for, for many people. I mean, we are not educated that way, you know? We, we were in business school, we learn about business. We were in the public policy school, we learn about work government, but we haven't really learned about the concept of social business. So, so it's such a fresh idea for everyone. So I, I definitely love it. And uh, I, 
since that moment, I was really inspired by Professor Yunus's work. Wow, I mean, this goes really way back, uh, more than 10 years, 12 years even back. And um, can you share with us more about, since you're involved such a long time, about the social business development and movement in China and uh, whether it gets more popular or, uh, and especially adopted by youth? Sure, sure. I'm thinking that maybe that uh, we, we have four stages. Four sta in the first uh, stage, I mean, back to 1980s, that many uh, like, you know, social, uh, I mean, we call social workers or professors work on the poverty, ending the poverty, learn about professionals work in microcredit in Bangladesh. So they are trying to replicate uh, the Grammy model in China. The, for example, there's, uh, we call the Chinese father of microcredit called Professor Du Xiaoshan, so who learn about mm -hmm. professionals work and also professionals uh, good friend. So, he was trying to, 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 to learn the model and then trying to replicate in Chinese villages. I think that was um, in 1980s and 1990s. So it's, and also UN jumped in and they also want to induce the, the microcredit model to, to more you know, uh, civil society organizations, even government office. This is the first stage. I think the microcredit model is, you know, every, Everyone work on the public sector. They know about that. The second stage is that um, uh, we 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 learn about uh, social entrepreneurship, and uh, people talk about social entrepreneurship. And in China, there's so many entrepreneurs become social business entrepreneur. Or in, at that moment, maybe we don't know the word social business entrepreneur, but actually it is social business entrepreneur. So, so they found they learn, and, and then professionals work. And uh, on Grammy Bank and also other models become a, a, a case study or somehow or a very successful story or or role model. So we're trying to learn that. So there are different trainings organized by the foundations, the civil society organizations, and even the universities. So we're trying to learn professionals' work. I think the third stage is that um, um, there is some university start to found UNU's social business center. One of the milestones is that in Beijing, one of the leading university, and also my university, my bachelor, I got bachelor degree from there, called the Jimmy University of China. For Jimmy University of China. The university is actually the one of the best university in China. And so Jimmy means people. So it's like a people's university in China. So there's many, uh, high, uh, senior officials from government, like uh, uh, who who get um, education from there. So I think it's uh, such a big news that the uh, University of China launched UNU Social Business Center there, and um, and then there's more universities. I think in including Hong Kong, including uh, other regions of Great China like Taiwan, like uh, in mainland. There's more universities joining. Uh, joining the network of YSPC. I think during this moment, the more professors discuss the topic of uh, social business. And even every year they have academic, they, they, I mean, apart from Social Business Day, we have our own Chinese academic forum on social business. So they are writing the papers in Chinese, in English, talking about social business in China. I think that this is the third stage. The, 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 the fourth stage, I mean, the, I mean, in the past five years, the Chinese government are really promoting, uh, you know, civil engagement on common good for everyone. And also trying to catch up with sustainable goals and others. And so social business is definitely one of the methodologies we want to, you know, make best use of this, this tour to, to, to advance the people's life. So this is first stage. So now there's an even bigger movement that uh, people are the big enterprise. There's uh, even some uh, celebrities and young people. They are trying to they are trying to like learn about social business and even launch the social business. One of the uh, uh, Olympic champion from China, he joined he joined the Social Business Day with me like in 2019. Actually, he founded a social business to help the disabled people to learn about the, uh, the ping pong, the, 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 the ping pong, the table tennis or ping pong. 
uh, and so he didn't know he didn't know it is social business but when we talk about uh, the model the social business he, he's he's so amazed and so excited that he think that oh this is the model I, I'm working on so this is I, I this is my definition I divide into four but I believe that uh, there's a there's a, a, a you know a, a big movement coming there's more and more people uh, will learn about social business we will bring the systematic change well wow, that's really amazing to learn uh, that there's so much going on in China at various levels. Um, and now I understand even better why always Chinese delegation is so big at, for example, Social <laughs> Business Day and international conferences on social business. Um, let me focus a bit on you. Uh, I think you were 19 when you founded the Youthing Center in Beijing. Um, what was your motivation back then? And uh, what are the core programs of, of your organization? Definitely. Uh, I mean, while well, looking back, I think uh, one of the, my biggest inspiration is uh, from Professor Yunus. So when I read, I mean, I think many young people, even like some, some, some uh, common friends, when we talk about this, I think they share the same feeling. I think Professor Yunus set a good example, a great example and inspiration for all the young people that we can choose a different path. Uh, and uh, he has worked very, very hard on, on, on bringing the, you know, uh, the, the credits, uh, micro credit to all these uh, poor people, all the long, uh, all the longs for, uh, for all these poor families. We are thinking that um, we want to, I mean, young people want to do something cool. They want to do something new. They want to do something social good. So when I was in college and um, I, I mean, my biggest role model is Professor Yunus. And then when I think that I should do something, I don't want to, you know, like a boringly work in a big office and uh, uh, doing the same work every day, just making money, didn't create any value. I was thinking that I should do something which can create social value, which can help others, and which can contribute to some global challenges. And that year, uh, I was uh, get uh, the chance to, joined the UN Climate Change Conference as a youth delegate from China. And I saw that uh, the glo uh, global warming or climate change is uh, such a important uh, global topic and we should engage more people there. I think uh, at that moment I started to say, let's engage some Chinese young people on all these global challenges and, and maybe we call global opportunities. We want to learn that what, what is the global problems, how we can contribute to that how we can work together with other young people from other countries, how we can learn um, role models like professionals, how these great leaders are working on creating you know, solutions for solving the problems. I think this is, a, this is a, the beginning. So, so in the past the more than 10 years, what we do is that we want to try to empower every young people to learn, advocate, take actions on all these global topics. And um, all these global opportunities, including the sustainable goals, climate change, social business. So, what we do is that so for the learning part, we are providing action learning for them. So, we said that the world is your classroom. So, it's like we bring the, you know, like uh, Chinese uh, youngsters, uh, Chinese uh, young Chinese to Bangladesh. The, the, the Grameen villages. Gra is there the best classroom for them to learn about how to help people? All these Grameen borrowers are the great teachers for them to learn about what the real life for the poor people, how did they change that? And the model of Grameen Bank is the best, uh, you know, like a business model. We learned that which can generate a sustainable revenue and same time helping the people. So this is the learning part. We call it action learning. Other working part is that uh, most of the time when we're doing something new, this is not part of the system before old system. So it's like what, what Professor Yunus did is that um, he's trying to create a new system. We need to bring this systematic change. So we need to advocate, we need to share, we need to talk with everyone. We need to get uh, them to know that. What is social business? What is the sustainable goals? Why we need to work on that? So this is uh, different programs working with uh, Professor Yunus working with UN, working with the World Bank. So we're trying to bring all this new concept to more people. So they, they, 
young people have more chances. So the action is that we have the competition and incubation programs, like linking all these change makers together so they can do something cool together. So this is basically what we do. So we, based on this methodology, we create different programs. Wow, so you're bringing young people to Bangladesh to learn from Grameen Bank and all the social business activities. How young are they? And uh, how many of them uh, went to Bangladesh so far? How often did you do that? Right, so in the past few years, we actually have two bench of people, but now we're working on the third bench. The first bench is the uh, youngest who are in the middle school. So they, they, actually, they, they actually didn't really uh, learn much um, all these uh, different concepts, but, but I think it's uh, such fresh ideas. So the youngest member is like 14 or 15. And uh, the second bench is uh, more senior than them. It's uh, like uh, who are in the university, who are bachelors, uh, who are master students, even sometimes uh, one or two PhDs who are borrowed by their papers, the, the, job, the, the job wizards. And these two group of people, what do we do? Because they are students, no matter they are in middle school or they are in colleges. What we do is that it's different to what they learn in their classroom, traditional classroom, is that uh, professors uh, talk with all these uh, you know, um, slides, who, which they didn't change for the past 10 years. And then they're showing the slides and uh, students uh, making presentation and um, you know, listen to them, or sometimes discussion. What we do is that we want to bring, we, we, are, we have this kind of competition in China, which is uh, they are learning the SDGs, social business, have, have you know, like try to create some uh, new business, uh, social business models. And we select the winners and, and young people to go to Bangladesh to meet the real change makers, including, I mean, the, every time if Professor Yunus in Dhaka, he's very nice to meet all these young people and this, noisy young people, uh, young, youngsters are trying to, everyone trying to take a picture with professionals, ask some shitty questions, but professionals is very patient and very nice to, to be with them. Sometimes the schedule is only 15 minutes and professionals stay more than one hour. So I think professionals love young people. Uh, and, and, we, and for this program, we call China Bangladesh uh, Social Business Young Leaders Program, because we see that during the, we, we learn about social business, but uh, they also learn about this country. They learn about Bangladesh. Before in China, if you ask people about Bangladesh, what they know is that they know there is a famous uh, uh, animal called Bangladesh tiger, but they, they really didn't know where the country is. But through this program, it's not only about uh, social business, but also about culture, about uh, building connections among young leaders. So this is what, I mean, after this program, we get uh, all these young people from the network, connect to each other. Uh, they, in the end of the program, they need to make a presentation. Uh, it's like a, create a, a social business proposal. And after that, uh, they, they stay in contact, someone even funded their social business afterwards. And sometimes we connect with them with the foundation or incubation program. So this is something we are working on. Uh, you know, the, the follow-up programs on social business. That's absolutely remarkable. And I think it's so important uh, for young people actually to visit Bangladesh, to visit Grameen and Grameen Bank and the UNIS Center and learn uh, where it all started and how social business really functions. And uh, I, as I, I was in Bangladesh many times myself, um, this is really the best school one can have, uh, no question about it. Alex, as a young leader uh, yourself, you work closely with the United Nations globally and especially at uh, the headquarters in New York. Um, you are the first elected board of directors from China in the United Nations uh, major group on children and youth. And with your experience, what are your views on, on the role of social business in achieving the sustainable development goals? I think it's why, I mean, this question is very important and why a good question that uh, I think uh, social business pl play a very, very important role for sustainable development goals because sustainable development goals is a very comprehensive agenda. 
and it's a vision we have for the year of 2030. But how can we do that? And uh, I still remember the quotation from Professor Yunus in 2016 in the UN General Assembly. He said that uh, everyone should commit to contributing the achievements of uh, sustainable goals. But how can we do that? The most uh, dependable way is number one, we should, uh, we should uh, apply for the methodology of social business. So social business is uh, the tour for us to achieve sustainable goals, creating all this program. Number two, we should unleash the potential of young people. Number three, we should make best use of technology. So I think that um, what we are doing, uh, I mean, what, what the work we are doing together is that we are trying to, all the programs we are trying to, you know, like uh, make sure that the, direct, the, the, the direction of technology is for people and for planet. We should engage more young people to learn about social media. And then in the end, they can create uh, more Use lead, touch lead, social business. And social business are the solutions for us to achieve sustainable goals. So, and also is in my view, is most effective way. I, I think it's a perfect matching on the UN agenda. Like um, I talked with many um, ambassadors to UN from different governments. When they learn about the social business, the concept there, they, they talk with me, this, oh, this is something we want. This is a, uh, we should support because they can screw up. And the ones, if we can solve our social problem by social business, it means that we have a sustainable solution. It's not depend on the grants. It not depends, uh, it doesn't depends on the donation. It means that so we are using the mechanism of market to solve the problem. So I think it is very important that uh, like uh, the role of social business in achieving sustainable goals. Sorry. So in 2017, if, if I remember right, you, you took action at uh, the United Nations and co-organized a uh, first youth event uh, during the United Nations Week or the General Assembly, um, which since then, and Professor Yunus mentioned that before, has been taking place every year. So can you explain a bit uh, what uh, your youth groups that you're bringing into these events uh, doing and discussing and presenting, and maybe for the ones who are not involved into the United Nations topic, what is the General Assembly or what is the UN Week? Sure. Um, yes. Also, one more great question. I mean, UN General Assembly is that, uh, and also we call UN Week, is that uh, the high level events week of United Nations General Assembly. And the uh, United Nations General Assembly is actually the, the other important conference, it's most uh, important conference among hundreds of thousands UN conference. This conference brings all the head of states and uh, the, the government leaders, all business leaders, civil society leaders, and, uh, and uh, most, of the, I mean, the top leadership of the over war coming together. There's one week, there's uh, many different uh, events, we call high level events, which is also we are part of that because we bring the prime ministers and ministers and all these great leaders get together to talk about all these, uh, all these uh, topics. So during this week, so there's, uh, you know, we, I mean, many people maybe watch older television uh, broadcasting the General Assembly debate. Besides the debate, there's many, many different high level events happening in the United Nations handcarter we focus on different, uh, different topics. And so all the important uh, global development topics will be discussed this week with uh, you know, top leadership of, from different countries, with uh, leaders from different sectors. And um, we get together and we discuss the global development agenda. And this kind of agenda and uh, conclusion of discussion will become you know, different actions. Will will guide will create different standards or guidelines for the global movement. So this is a very very important uh, way that we 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 will like uh, we need to work on. And the, the beginning for us to start that is that before 2017, we will also have a chance to go there. 
And then I talked with many, I, I joined many, this kind of so-called uh, uh, great event or high level event, but they are discussing some topics, I think not focus on the action or solution, which is uh, focus on the slogans, big, uh, it's like, a, you know, like a, the, the, the speak a very, very broad topic. But what I'm thinking, when I talk with, uh, with them about social business, we focus on the solution part. We focus on action part. We were thinking that uh, we should always, uh, you know, think like Professor Yun said, we should we should think big and and uh, act small. We should think globally, mm. act locally. And so this is the uh, idea. When I talk with them, all this, um, you know, like uh, um, embassies of garments in UN and uh, different friends from uh, different um, uh, garment embassies, they said that. We should discuss this in the UN General Assembly, and this is something we can bring the, you know, like a grassroots uh, solutions and uh, innovations to a global level, and which we can show a great example that uh, there are different innovations led by people, different innovations led by people happening, and there's a great model called social business. This is the beginning, and this is our motivation back to 2017 that we need to make sure that we should have the social business voices in UN General Assembly. I see. So you're gathering um, political leaders uh, on the state or federal level at the events. You bring them together with uh, youth. Um, can you uh, tell the audience a bit more who's participating in such an event? Who was uh, with you in the event uh, in the past? Uh, whether it, it's been countries, whether it's been political leaders, whether it's been um, delegations or civil society organizations. How does the event look like? Right. The event will be inside the UN headquarters in New York. And uh, there's a really selective uh, list of uh, leaders from different, because you know that there's 200, more than 200 countries and each country will send their you know, the, the, uh, the political leaders like prime minister, president of country and, um, you know, all the ministers and also their ambassadors. Um, so there are also other leaders. So all this, and, and they will have the bench to enter the UN General Assembly um, or this building like UN headquarters. For this event, we invite uh, all the different governments uh, and they extend their invitation to their ministers. And um, even sometimes we get uh, Prime ministers like uh, uh, the prime minister of Cabo Verde have joined us twice. So we all know that all these head of states or, or, or government leaders have a really busy schedule by minutes in, 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 in New York. But they join us for one hour, two hours events. They are trying to learn that uh, because what we discuss is not about policy level, but we more focus on innovation and solutions. They're very, very interesting on social business. So for the events that every year we get many applications that many applications for their, for their, um, uh, you know, like uh, the ticket to, to go inside the UN headquarter. Um, so all of them are the leaders from different sectors, including civil society, um, the social development sector, international organizations, United Nations and uh, governments and their embassies in New York and uh, some, and also business leaders and every time and professors taught us that we should make sure we have some space for young people. So every time we also select some really young people, young leaders from different countries to be, make sure that there's a, have a good uh, generational balance and sometimes gender balance in the room. So this is uh, how we work on it. Well, and um, for, uh... Remember, right, Professor Yunus attended every single event uh, at UN since 2017 and delivered uh, inspiring keynotes as usual. And besides the fact that he is there uh, uh, also in his capacity as United Nations Sustainable Development uh, Goals Advocate, why do you think that uh, member states of the United Nations are interested in joining such an event? Is it about the young people? Is it about social business? Is it about sustainable development? Is it all of that combined? I think uh, uh, all these government leaders are very, very interested in that because what they do is that uh, it's not uh, UN general 
UN General Assembly is not a talk show platform. It's not a feminist speech in the whole of General Assembly. Even sometimes uh, they make some jokes like President Trump. Last year, everyone laughing at him. And um, actually like a UN General Assembly should be a platform for actions, solutions, and innovation. Actually, it should be a platform that we create action plan or to-do list. So, but they need to bring this concrete solution or concrete, uh, you know, like a skewable uh, uh, action plans back to their country. So they, they, are, they are trying to learn some different models. We know that uh, the current system, we all know that current system make the rich get richer, the poor get the poor. This is not the future we want. I mean, all the young people, all the, I mean, in the past, in the past several generations, we have this voice is has been very, very clear. But how can we change that? We definitely believe that social business is one of the great greatest tour for that. And I believe that if young people understand that, government leaders will also understand that. So this is why when they learn that there is a kind of high level event like as a social business high level event, all of them are trying to approach, they want to come to listen, come to speak, come to share, come to learn. So this is uh, why, they are, why they are doing that. And one of the remarkable experience I remember very, very uh, clearly is that uh, uh, in 2017, when we have the, when we have the uh, high level event, we launched the book of Professor Yunus, the world, the world of Three Zeros. This book is also very, very important. And, and, and uh, I mean, this is eye-opening for many staffs working in UN, working in the international organizations and uh, working in the government because the language they are using, the stories they have, the methodologies they learn are different from the traditional schools. They didn't really have a, uh, they didn't have a chance to go to Bangladesh to learn that uh, what, what the real yeah. innovation there when they grew up. So, so, so I believe these Chinese who went there will become uh, responsible leaders in the future. And so we launched the book there. And then it's very interesting, like uh, two years later, 2019, I, we in some events, in the UN events, I met uh, the president of Costa Rica in the, in the South America. Well, I mentioned that uh, we have this high level event and the president replied to me that, uh, I read Professor Yunus book, The War of Sierra Zero, where the country is learning on that. I hope sometimes we can invite Professor Yunus to visit Costa Rica. And, uh, and he introduced his ambassador to UN to me that talked to me, next time we have this Halloween event, please uh, share with my ambassador and I want to put it in the agenda and uh, I want to meet Professor Yunus. So you see that there's uh, even only the book the book is, uh, you know, some of the book about social business and also other concepts by professionals. It has a big impact on all these global leaders. They also need these fresh ideas. This is amazing, Alex. And I applaud you for getting this done to launch the very important book of Professor Yunus, The World of Three Zeros at the UN, at this global level. And uh, we'll learn what kind of an impact it creates and uh, how the network is spreading uh, for uh, everyone who's participating to take concrete actions. So is there a, another event planned this year and this uh, coming United Nations week in September? And because of the pandemic, um, physical meetings at the headquarters uh, won't be possible. So you're planning it to have it as a virtual meeting? Yes. Yes, we. Uh, I mean, since last year, because of the pandemic, we will. Um, I mean, the the, the bad side, the, the bad effect is that we have to. We, we cannot meet physically. We can, we should have online event. But the good effect is that uh, because of it's online, we can engage. We can engage everyone. We can engage as many as possible. Our event it will be definitely open event for everyone for all the people who has the uh, same invention, who want to learn about social business, and they can definitely have a conversation. So we don't want, want to have a closed door, um, you know, like a 
like a in closed door meeting for just uh, some you know so called leaders. We want to have our open discussion with everyone. We can bring all this. Uh, with, everyone can watch live stream. They can contribute the ideas. They can learn about the best practice. And so we hope that uh, the event is for people for everyone. So this year, uh, uh, we will have we will have the hell of events. We I mean the the, the the proposed date will be September 23rd. And we also get other many other invitations and to, you know, like uh, they approach the organizing committee that they want to, because it's online, they want to part of the event. And so we are also organizing some side events with all these partners on 20, uh, September 24, September 25. But September 25 is birthday of Sassimodum Goes. So it's like a celebration talking about, focus on talking about uh, solutions innovations and all the different stories um, uh, on, on, on social business. As you know, Dom, that uh, we actually, the, 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 the most interesting part for our event every year is that uh, in most of the UN event, it's like a statement, like government, you know, like uh, all these uh, high level leaders read their statements. It's, uh, the statements is, uh, uh, is the same you 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 watch on TV, so it's uh, actually planned by many officials. But in our high level event, we are having a session called Pachacucha. Pachacucha mm. is like everyone have eight minutes that they talk about their solutions, their their their, their local actions, and to, and and, and Pachacucha is that all these government leaders and all these uh, uh, leaders from UN in national organizations they will be listeners. So before they're reading the statements, but now they're listening to the, all these actions. I think this is the most interesting part uh, of our high-level event. Even we call it high-level because that we have uh, many ministers and even prime minister joining with us. But I think these people are, have our, the same heart with us, want to sit down, want to listen to their, all these innovations, want to listen to their social business movements from different countries. I think this is... Uh, this is the most amazing part. And because of this, I also met many interesting and inspirational young leaders and so these change makers, social business entrepreneurs. So if I understand correct, you will have uh, the young people and youth initiatives and students also presenting, pitching their social business ideas at this event? Yes, yes, we will have a side events just, there's one side event just for young people. So everyone, young people will be speaker. So they will talk about their ideas, but also we invite young people to the high level opening, which can, you know, interact, uh, interact with um, global leaders. But we get, we create this Pachacucha and youth piece for them. They can share their solution. It's not random talks, but it's more focused on actions. So I learned from you when we prepared the, the, this uh, uh, lecture that you're also um, planning to have a session on the new uh, initiative of Professor Yunus that he has developed on three zero clubs. So for anyone in, for in, in the audience uh, who, who's not yet familiar with this new initiative, uh, it is addressing youth, uh, making them familiar with the three zero world and um, inspire them to set up a global network of clubs to achieve this goal. So and I'm very much looking forward to this session and even greater to know that uh, everyone and anyone around the world can join this event because it's virtual. And uh, I'm sure you will share all the links on your social media platforms uh, and where it will be live streamed. And um, is there any other impact that you expect as an outcome from the event? Yeah, for, the, for, 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 for the other impacts of the events is that um, number one, we are actually like showing the great examples of, of this change, change maker stories or their social business uh, solutions in a global platform. Before they may be working, we have some innovators or social business entrepreneurs working in Africa, working in Asia, working in Latin America. But now they, they, they only interact with each other locally. But now we have this kind of global platform, they can share their stories. And so the second thing is that uh, uh, there's a follow-up actions 
and follow up networks. They get connected. We are, they, they, they build a partnership and uh, expand their or scale up their 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 social business. I think this this is second. Number three is that uh, we are actually getting more initial organizations who are who get to know social business, who want to create uh, different uh, programs to support social business. I think this this is uh, this is. Uh, uh, this is the uh, impact uh, for the event, but definitely I believe that uh, uh, we are building this momentum that uh, brings all, we want to create our cross-sector and cross-generational partnership network, which, um, which can innovate together for sustainable goals. I think this is uh, the goal and impact we want to have. Okay. Um uh, we learned that you're also the uh, director on the, the Global Committee on Social Business for Sustainable Development Goals. This is interlinked with the UN activities of yours as well. Uh, what does it stand for? And can young people get involved here as well? Definitely, definitely. For the, because the, the, big, the, the reason why we created this global committee is that uh, back to 2017, when, the, when, we, when we talk with the friends from different governments, and young people from different uh, different parts of the world, we were talking that um, we should form this kind of global committee that uh, we can work together, working on the social business for sustainable goals. And uh, so this is why we want to form this our, our, our partnership network. So this is beginning. So in the beginning, young people are part of that. And there's many also youth organizations, not only young people, but but uh, some youth network and youth organizations. They are part of that. They're, they're, they're working very hard to promote the idea. And, um, and uh, for, for us, the I mean, apart from every year's high-level event uh, during the uh, UN General Assembly, the number one priority for us is that we should uh, work together with all these uh, social business supporting organizations especially like UNU Center, like, um, uh, you know, YY Foundation, uh, Grammy Creative Lab, all these different organizations that we want to support global social business movement. So number one priority is that we, we want to get more people to learn about Social Business Day. Uh, and we want to get more people to join uh, the UNU Social Business Network. So every time in this global community, um, you know, all the partners and all the you know friends, new friends, old friends we made, we made, we talk about. Oh, this is a one, two, three. You can engage on social business, and there's a one, two, three models you can learn. And this is our network friends in different countries. I think this is a number one priority. Uh, and then after that, we are developing the more and more programs including the, there's a more partners from Europe or in Asia, they're approaching, they want to set up this kind of regional center, or regional hub. Uh, we definitely, we see that this is also in the future, we want to link this to all these uh, different initiatives, especially in this year's 3 Zero Club. So we want to get everyone work together in China. And I, I mean, we're based in China, but uh, we are working with many different uh, countries. Uh, and we want to get everyone in you know, network work on the 3 zero club. And, uh, and the latest news for us is that we want to have, we will have a report. Um, it's not we want to, it's, it's we will, because we get the support from the economy of Franciscan. We are one of the 10 grants um, uh, uh, winner for the, the economy of Franciscan, which is a, uh, um, I think uh, it's uh, uh, inspired by uh, Pump Francis that uh, they want to create this kind of new new economy, the future world. It's actually exactly the the uh, the professor what professor described to us. It's the new destination for us. We 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 need to build this kind of new system. So we we get the support from the the economy of of Franciscan and also other many other partners, like including the Professor Jeffrey Sachs from Columbia University, SDSN, and others. We will have a report on the social business cases for sustainable goals. So is that we will, do, through the year, we collect different uh, successful social business stories 
they are working on different assessment goals, and we will have the report. And the plan is that we want to, we will, we are working now, it's a year long program, and uh, next year's U, uh, UN General Assembly high event, we will launch next year's UN General Assembly high event. So, and later every year we will have this report, which is uh, showing the leading and real examples by young people, by, I mean, by the normal people, like, uh, the friends around us who just want to make a difference, who want to bring the positive change, who learn about the model of social business and uh, they create their real impact using the right uh, model or following the message of social business. We want to put their stories in the report, get to inspire more people. So this is a briefly plan for global committee uh, uh, of social business uh, for sustainable goals. And uh, in the future we are, or open network we are cross sector and cross generation networks we welcome everyone so we we want to make sure that uh, is that we can we can we can work with different partners to work on different uh, programs and i will keep updating uh, with everyone every year in the un general assembly events and we will have the, the social media accounts updating all this progress thank you very much alex uh, this is uh, truly amazing, this initiative and your engagement at the United Nations. Um, I think uh, we're, we're about to, to, to have to wrap, we have to wrap up as our time is coming to an end. And uh, I would like to thank you very much. Um, we see uh, as our world is in crisis uh, from, from COVID-19 to climate change, to all these issues, it shows that um, we collectively need to take action more than ever to achieve the fully zero world, uh, the world that Professor Yunus has been promoting. We learned a lot from you today. It has been very insightful and inspiring uh, how you work with uh, Chinese youth and global youth in social business. And we're looking forward to, to follow you and you think center and continue to learn about uh, your impact uh, that you're creating with the organization. And with this, I would like to thank you again uh, and thank you all for watching this uh, lecture. And um, I hand back the floor to Zinat. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dom. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dominique. Thank you very much, Alex. It was indeed wonderful to listen to the conversation and know about the activities you were doing. Um, it's great that the youth are involved because, you know, the power to change the world is in their hands now. And the Professor Yunus, who is a firm believer in the power of youth, um, has been encouraging everyone to get involved, you know, with especially the three zeros issues. And now we have the three zero clubs, um, which are for young people, you know, people as young as like 12 years old, um, they can make the three zeros club um, and work on social issues that are um, hampering the planet, um, poverty, unemployment, climate change, you name it. There are so many social problems we can fight. And um, wonderful that you're engaging the youth in solving such problems. And we look forward to having many, many more such initiatives, um, not only in China, but all over the world. Um, it would be great to get our YSBCs engaged in many of your initiatives so that is something we can look into for the future so thank you again very much we really enjoyed this conversation and we look forward to having uh, continuing this in the future um, the three zero club you can check out more information about it in our chat box and with that we would like to conclude today's session and um, uh, welcome you to many many more such lectures in the future we now request the tech team to play the slides for our upcoming events all our session recordings will be found on our social media pages you know center facebook page you know social business center facebook Facebook page, YouTube channel. You can watch our lectures. Even the past lectures will be available there. Uh, we have many events coming up. Uh, the Social Business um, Academia Conference, the SBAC, and uh, the Global Social Business Summit, of course, in November. So now I request the tech team to kindly play those slides. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining the session. We'll see you again in our upcoming lecture.
Thank you very much again, everyone, for joining us today. See you in the upcoming sessions. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have a good day.